In the previous section, we discussed the distribution of charge across conductors. Let us now discuss the concept of corona discharge, also known as action at points. So what is corona discharge? Well, this is the apparent loss of charge, apparent loss of charge from the surface of a sharp conductor from the surface of a sharp conductor due to very high electric field intensity. Now let's see how corona discharge works. Suppose we have a pear-shaped conductor like the one we discussed in the previous section let us assume this conductor is given a positive charge. We know that the positive charges are going to concentrate more on the sharp end than the other part of the conductor. This is a typical distribution of charge for such a conductor. Notice that there is more charge density at the sharp point than the other points of the conductor. This conductor is surrounded by air molecules around it. So these are air molecules. Now because of the high electric field intensity at this point, which is caused by the high charge density, the air molecules around here are going to get ionized. This is very important. The air molecules around the sharp conductor get ionized. That means they become positive and negative ions. Let's go ahead and do that. So in this case, our sharp conductor, because of the high electric field intensity at the sharp points, the air molecules will get ionized, indicate the charges. So instead of having air molecules here, the air molecules have become ionized. We have a stream of positive and negative charges. Let's do that. stream of positive and negative charges. And because these ions are charged, that means they have positive and negative charges on them, the negative ions will be attracted towards the sharp end, while the positive ions in this case will be repelled away from the fundamental laws of electrostatics, negative charges are attracted by positive charges, while positive and positive repel each other. So we have negative ions attracted. While the positive ions are repelled, So let's see what happens here after. Because the negative ions are attracted towards the sharp end, they are going to neutralize the sharp end. And at the end of the process, at the end of the process, the sharp end is going to be neutralized. And the stream of positive ions is going to propagate forward so virtually the positive charge that was originally here is now being repelled away but in reality this positive charge isn't the very charge that was here the original charge has been neutralized while 
in the process of neutralization some positive ions have been repelled away so virtually these positive charges here represent a loss of charge that was originally here and this process is collectively what we call corona discharge the apparent loss of charge from the surface of a very sharp conductor due to high electric field intensity this is a very important phenomenon in physics because we use it for very important applications as we will see. So one of the applications of corona discharge is the lightning conductor. You've probably seen a structure of this kind on roofs. This is called the lightning conductor and we use the lightning conductor to protect structures, protect structures like buildings and bridges and tall trees from the damages of lightning from the damage of lightning. As you notice, on the lightning conductor we have very sharp pointed ends. This is done so that corona discharge can easily occur and we'll see how corona discharge helps in the action of the lightning conductor. So take note of the sharp pointed spikes at the top of the lightning conductor. Let's take this diagram in our case use, so we have a lightning conductor placed on top of the roof with the sharp spikes. We use three in this case. For our demonstration, let's have a negatively charged cloud passing over our house. So this is a negatively charged cloud. Because the cloud is made up of polar molecules, there is a possibility that on top of this negatively charged cloud, there are some positive charges, a few of them. Since the negative charges are the ones at the bottom, we'll consider this to be, on average, a negatively charged cloud. But that's not important. All that matters is we have a thunder cloud on top here, or a storm cloud for that matter which is charged. As you can see, our lightning conductor has sharp spikes on top with a copper strip that extends down to the ground. And inside the ground, we have a ground rod or sometimes we use a copper plate so that electrons can be easily conducted to and from the ground. So these thunder clouds or storm clouds have a very, very high charge. And if a cloud is passing above our house, since this is a negatively charged cloud, it will induce positive charges on the thunder clouds. This is possible by the process of electric induction. Remember, the induced charge is always equal to the inducing charge and since the inducing charge is immensely huge also the induced charge is going to be very huge here so we have an induced positive charge but because these sharp points because of these sharp points here there will be a very high electric field intensity at this point and so because of the high, very high electric field intensity, the air molecules in the air surrounding this lightning conductor will get ionized. So we'll have ions in the space here, negative ions and positive ions. So these are ionized, okay, ions that have been formed in the air due to the high electric field intensity at this point as in the previous explanation of corona discharge the negative ions will be attracted to the sharp spikes and the positive ions will be repelled to the cloud to neutralize it meanwhile these electrons that have been attracted to the sharp spikes will be conducted to the ground so these are electrons conducted to the ground. And virtually the negative charge that was originally on the storm cloud 
has been conducted to the ground safely. This ground has immense amount of charge because the earth is at zero potential. So it can take up any amount of charge. It can give us any amount of charge that we always need. So in this case, our thunder cloud is safely discharged and our structure is protected from the danger of lightning. This process would be exactly the same if we had a cloud whose underside is positive, only that the charges induced here would be reversed. Let's have another application of corona discharge, and that's going to be the electrostatic generator, commonly called by the Van, uh, the Van de Graaff generator named after Robert Van de Graaff who invented it. And basically this is a type of generator used for generating very high, very high potential differences. We haven't discussed what potential difference is, but we can talk about it. It's a generator is for generating very high potential differences, especially those used for atomic experiments. Basically, the Van de Graaff generator consists of a uniformly shaped sphere or dome, metallic and highly conducting. It has two pulleys up and down, and it has a silk belt passing over the pulleys. So we have a silk belt going round like this. This dome is supported by insulating stands. So here we go, the insulating stands. The silk belt is rotating on the two pulleys in the clockwise direction and it is being driven by a motor. So in this case I'll assume there's a driving motor here perhaps okay here we go this is a driving motor this is a silk belt these are pulleys we have already discussed that this is a sphere conducting sphere i'll call it the dome very important here are the two sharp spikes on the generator. We have one on top here and another one at the bottom. The distance between these sharp points and the belt is extremely small to enable charge exchange occur easily. The lower spikes are connected to a positive potential. There we go. So this is about positive 10 kilovolts so that the lower electrode is kept at a positive potential. Okay, while the negative, uh, sorry, while the second electrode is connected to the metallic dome. So if we start the driving motor, the belt is going to begin moving upwards. Oops, indicate the direction the belt is going to start moving upwards and rotating like that because the lower electrode is connected to a positive potential these positive charges are going to be all around this electrode including the sharp points here and because of the high electric field intensity at the sharp points corona discharge will occur making the positive charges to be lost apparently and the belt will pick up these charges so the belt will become positively charged as it moves upwards the belt becomes positively charged because of the positive charges and these positive charges are lost from here by corona discharge so when the belt reaches the second electrode Negative charges will be induced at this point. Okay, use another color. Negative charges will be induced at this point, and positive charges will be induced at this point. 
So these positive charges will be distributed across the dome because it is uniform in shape. The charges will be distributed uniformly and because of the high electric field intensity, corona discharge will also take place at this point and the negative charges will discharge the belt before it goes over. So this side of the belt does not have any charge because the belt is discharged at this point before it crosses over the pulley and so this side does not have any charge. The process continues every time the belt reaches here, negative charges are sprayed onto it because they are lost from the electrode at the bottom here. As the belt moves up, due to corona discharge, the positive charges are repelled to the dome while negative charges generated due to induction will also suffer corona discharge being repelled to the belt and the belt will get discharged. The process continues and as the process continues more charges are added to the dome. More add charges are added to the dome and the more charges are added to the dome the more electric potential difference we generate. So practically we always have an ion source connected to the dome. This is a source of positive ions. Source of ions. These are positive ions and because positive and positive repel each other, these positive ions are repelled with a very high force uh, for practical use, for example, for initiating nuclear reactions or for use in atom splitting experiments. So I have two pictures here, perhaps to give you a clear view. My, my diagram is only for explanation, not so suitable, but you can see we have a positive potential here. Okay, we have a positive potential. Then the electrode B1 has sharp points due to corona discharge. This positive charge is lost to the belt. The belt moves up at electrode E2. The positive charge induces negative charges. The negative charges, or the positive charges are repelled to the dome, while the negative charges are repelled to the silk belt due to corona discharge. And by the process, uh, by the time the belt passes over the pulley P2, it has lost all the charge and the process continues. In this diagram, the source of positive ions is placed at the top here and the positive ions are repelled down to the target experiment. I'll also show you the three-dimensional look to give you a better feel of how the setup works. Still, you can see we have a silk belt this time around in a three-dimensional form, we have our charged comb due to this positive source. We have a driving motor at the bottom here, perhaps this. And then we have the pulleys at the bottom and at the top. Then we have another electrode here which discharges the belt and also repels the positive charges to the metal sphere on top here. So this is how the Van de Graaff generator works and this is just a few of the very important applications of corona discharge. Next we'll look at Coulomb's law.